Our Swift UI app is looking good so far. We have a stack of cards that can be dragged around to control the app, plus haptic feedback and some accessibility support. But at the same time, it's also pretty full of glitches that are holding it back. Some big, some small, but all worth addressing. First, it's possible to drag cards around where they aren't at the top. This is really confusing for users because they can grab a card they can't actually see. So this should never be possible. To fix this, we're going to use allows hit testing so only the last card, the one on top, can be dragged around. So find the stacked modifier in content view and add this directly below. Allows hit testing, index is equal to self.cards.count minus one. Second, our UI is a bit of a mess when used with VoiceOver. If you launch on a real device with VoiceOver enabled, you'll find you can tap on the background image to get background image read out, which is pointless. However, things get worse. Make small swipes to the right and VoiceOver will move through all our screen elements. It reads out the text from all our cards, even the ones that aren't visible. We should make it use a decorative image so it won't be read out as part of the layout. Modify the background image to this, image decorative background. To fix the cards, we have to use accessibility hidden modifier with a similar condition to the allows hit testing modifier we added a minute ago. In this case, every card that's an index less than the top card should be hidden from voiceover because there's really nothing useful it can do with the card. So add this directly below the allows hit testing modifier. Accessibility hidden index is less than self.cars.count minus one. There's a third accessibility problem with our app, and it's the direct result of using gestures to control things. Yes, gestures are great fun to use most of the time, but if you have specific accessibility needs, it can be very hard to use them. In this app, our gestures are causing multiple problems. It's not apparent to voiceover users how they should control the app. First, we don't say the cards are buttons that can be tapped. Second, when the answer is revealed, there's no audible notification of what it was. And third, users have no way of swiping left or right to move through the cards. It takes very little work to fix these problems, but the payoff is that our app is much more accessible to everyone. First, we have to make it clear that our cards are tappable buttons. This is as simple as adding accessibility add traits with is button to the Z stack in card view. Now voiceover will read who played the 13th doctor in Doctor Who button. An important hint to users the card can be tapped. Second, we have to help the system read the answer to the card as well as the questions. This is possible right now, but only if the user swipes around on the screen. It's far from obvious. So to fix this, we're going to detect whether the user has voiceover enabled in their device. And if so, automatically toggle between showing the prompt and showing the answer. That is, rather than have the answer appear below the prompt, we'll switch it out and just show the answer, which will cause VoiceOver to read it immediately. Now SwiftUI doesn't have an environment property that tells us when VoiceOver is running, but instead has a general property called accessibility enabled. This isn't triggered when things like differentiate without color, reduce motion, or reduce transparency are enabled and it's the closest option SwiftUI gives us to voiceover running. So add this new property to card view. At environment, accessibility enabled, var accessibility enabled. Right now our code for displaying the prompt and answer looks like this. We're gonna change that so the prompt and answer is shown in a single text view with accessibility enabled deciding which layout shown. So amend your code to this. If Accessibility enabled. Text, if it's showing answer is true, card.answer, otherwise card.prompt. In a large title font and a black foreground color. Else our current code. If you try that out with voiceover, you'll hear it works much better. As soon as the card is double tapped, the answer is read out. Third, we need to make it easier for users to mark cards as correct or wrong, because right now our images just don't cut it. Not only do they stop users from interacting with our app using tap gestures, but they also get read out as their SF symbol's name, checkmark, circle, image, rather than anything useful. 
To fix this, we need to replace the images with buttons that actually remove the cards. We don't actually do anything different if the user was correct or wrong. After all, I need to leave something for your challenges. But we can at least remove the top card from the deck. At the same time, we're going to provide a label and hint so users get a better idea of what the buttons do. So replace your current H stack with those images with this new code. Button, action, with animation, self.remove card at self.cards.count minus one. Image, system name, X mark circle, with padding, 70% opaque black, and a circle clip shape. Accessibility label, text wrong. Accessibility hint, text, mark your answer as being incorrect. Then a spacer. Then another button, action, with animation, self.remove card at self.cards.count minus one. Image, system name, checkmark.circle, with some padding, with a background, and a clip shape. And this time, the accessibility label, text correct, and the hint, text mark your answer as being correct. Because those buttons remain on screen even when the last card has been removed, we need to add a guard check to the start of remove card at, to make sure we don't try and remove a card that doesn't exist. So, put this new line of code at the start of that method. Guard index is greater or equal to zero, else return. Finally, we can make those buttons visible when either differentiate without color is enabled, or when voiceover is enabled. This means adding another property to content view. At environment, accessibility enabled, var, accessibility enabled. Then modify the condition if differentiate without color to this, or accessibility enabled. With those changes, our app works much better for everyone. Good job. Before we're done, I'd like to add one tiny extra change. Right now, if you drag an image a little, then let go, we set its offset back to zero, which causes it to jump back into the center of the screen. If we attach a spring animation to our card, it'll slide into the center, which I think is a much clearer indication to our user of what actually happened. To make this happen, add an animation modifier to the end of the Z stack in card view, directly after the on tap gesture. Animation dot spring. Now, if you look carefully, you might notice the card flash red if you drag a little to the right, then release. More on that later.